Let's control our spindle with one of these. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today I'll be installing this RS485 adapter to control my spindle under UC CNC. I've removed all my previous control wiring and relays and with this adapter I'll be able to turn the spindle on and off as well as set the speed and all with just two wires. The best part of this is it's not dependent on any particular control hardware like for instance the Gecko G540 I used in a previous episode for controlling the spindle's speed. This makes a universal control method for the Hunyang VFD drives and could be a good option for your machine. The RS458 adapter used in this video is available from multiple suppliers and is incredibly cheap. Now to install it I'll be using these instructions here provided with the plugin. They're easy to follow and are well written. I'll only be installing basic functionality as that's all I'm interested in. I believe when installing something like this it's best to do the basics first and then once you've got them going continue on to more advanced features. Now this plugin is a new development and this particular version is only a couple of days old at the time this video was made. A big thank you goes out to Dan for all his hard work in developing the plugin and sharing it with those of us in the CNC community. So let's have a look at how we do this. So to make things easy I put everything I need into a folder on my desktop. Here I have my UC CNC folder and it has two items in it. First is this here, this is the driver files for my USB to RS458 adapter. I'll simply double click on that and click install. Do this before you plug the adapter in. With the device driver installed we can come along to the second folder. This is the plugin and I'll put a link to where you can download the latest version. Here's the plugin itself so we'll just right click and copy then we'll come down here to explore and we'll explore the C drive and we'll see UC CNC. In there we have the plugins folder simply you go into there right click and go paste and that's our plugin installed. The other file on that folder is this one here. It tells you what settings you need to put into the VFD drive as well as what changes you need to make to UC CNC. So here's my RS485 adapter and I've connected it by two wires back to my VFD. They connect to the plus RS and minus RS contacts in the VFD and it doesn't matter if you get them around the wrong way it won't hurt anything it just won't work. So if it doesn't work one way, you can always try reversing the polarity. Now one thing is important to note. This cable here, while it's shielded, I'm using the shield as a screen not to connect the signal. There are two wires inside this cable. The RS485 protocol is a balanced circuit. It needs a twisted pair of wires like this here. In theory it doesn't actually need to be shielded but it's not really going to hurt. The important thing is if you're going to use a shielded cable don't use one that has a outer shield and a single wire in it. You need one with two wires on the inside and then you can just ground that outside shield. To help I've made another drawing of how it connects and I'll put that on my website for you to download. With that connected we can now plug that into 
our USB hub here. And we can move on to the next step. I need to check the VFD is correctly configured. First, register 0 needs to be set to 0 to enable changes. Registers 1 and 2 need to be set to a value of 2. This enables commands on RS-485 port of the VFD. Next we move to register 163. We're going to set that to 1. And that's the VFD address that we entered into MAC3. Then register 164, we're going to change to a 1. And 165, we're going to set to a 3. Don't worry about it. All this information is in the document that accompanies the plugin. Once I've finished, I go back and relock the VFD by changing register 0 back to a 1. This prevents accidental changes. So when that adapter is plugged in, the laptop will find our adapter and load the drivers for it. We can now come over here to the start, right click my computer, go down to properties, hardware, device manager. There are several ways of getting to the device manager but I find that one the easiest. Depending on what version of Windows of course, there may be different methods of doing it. But here's our new driver, a US serial CH340 driver and it's COM3. We need to remember it's COM3 and we need to check what the port settings are. In this case they're 9K6, 8-bit, no parity, one stop bit. We'll go OK. So now we can start UCCNC. Once it opens we need to go into configuration and come down here under general settings to configure plugins. Here we can see the VFD drive plugin. This is the latest version, it's been created by Dan911 and he's only just released this particular version. We need to click Call Startup and Enable. We can then close and close down UCCNC. We now reopen. Until we close down and reopen, we will not be able to configure that plugin. It has to load when UCCNC loads. That's why we've had to shut it down and restart. So we'll go now back to configuration, general settings, configure plugins, and now when we push the configure button here, we'll be able to get into this screen. So first we need to set up our port. If we press available ports, it'll show what COM ports are available. I'm going to be using COM port 3. We've got a speed of 9K6. You can select other speeds from the drop-down box, but this speed must match the one you put into your VFD drive. I'm going to press save to port and a message comes up saying US UCCNC must restart for new settings to take effect. Go OK. Next we need to come down here and set our minimum RPM. In our case 6000. I'm going to have a maximum speed of 2400. That comes from the name plate on the spindle and the maximum frequency again from the spindle nameplate of 400. Now we put, need to put an S active label number in here and we can pick any number we want but I'm going to pick uh, 20666 but any number between 20,000 and 20999 can be used. If you wish you can go a bit further and set up a label number for a current reading of how much power your spindle is using. I'm not going to set that up on mine, I'm just going to keep mine nice and simple. Press save to settings. Another message comes up telling us our maximum, minimum and uh, frequency and it also mentions we need to restart for this to take effect. So we're just going to close that there down. 
and we'll restart. Next I'm going to go into the configuration general settings and down here we have edit screen. Now this is something new I'd never seen before. We need to push down the shift key and click the run tab up here. That takes us to our run screen but it's not actually the run screen of UCNC, it's actually an, we're in an editing program. So if I click here the S active box here, it comes up with a flashing red box around it. I'm going to come back down here to screen editor and we can see here a label number of 870. That's what it currently is, but if you recall when we were configuring before, I made it 20666. I'm going to apply those settings, go into file and go save screen set. Next I'm going to go configuration and under axis settings spindle I'm going to make sure that pulse width modulation spindle is ticked and I'm also going to make sure that I have unchecked here use pulleys so that's unchecked. The 6000 the 2400 has come from the plug-in so we don't need to worry about that. Down here we have a spindle relay output enable but down here we actually have a, um, a delay. Now this is our startup delay so I'm going to put 3000 milliseconds which is 3 seconds in both the Oh, sorry, into the M3 command there, that's the turn on. I'm going to make it 10 seconds, which is my spin down time. If I wish, I can also do the same for the M4 command. The M4 command is the anti-clockwise rotation or backwards rotation of the spindle. I won't be using that, but I'll fill it in anyway. I'll go apply settings and save settings we should be ready to test the spindle. So let's now test the spindle. Here we have the S set speed. That's the minimum speed when we first start up UCC and set will come up with that minimum speed of 6000 that I set in the plug-in. And over here we have the S active speed which is the speed the spindle will be actually turning at. And it's the 100% override speed. If I increase this here the set speed remains the same but the active speed actually changes in accordance with the override setting here. So let's take it out of reset and turn the spindle on. And the spindle will start at 6000 rpm. I can come down here and enter an MDI command S10000 and the speed will increase and it will go up to 9999. We can then step through our speeds and we go all the way up to 24,000. That's the maximum speed that this spindle is set to go. Now we get back to 100% and we can go a bit lower. We've reached now 6000 RPM. I can go lower, but it will not go below that value. Of course, yours may well be different. If you've got a water-cooled spindle, you can go much lower than 6000 RPM. And I can come back up again. And of course, we can turn it off. Well, that's all there is to it. If you want, you can use this plugin to monitor the spindle's current usage and display it on your screen. I'll post links to the various resources used in this video. While setting up this plugin, I did have some trouble with my RS485 adapter. I brought a new one, and after replacing it, the problems went away. When I opened the adapter, I found the USB serial chip was unmarked and I find it hard to believe that a company like Prolific would not label their circuits. 
The prolific 2303 chipsets are widely used in circuits and are good, but there are also copied versions of them out there. The same applies to the FDTI 232 chipsets, so be careful when buying. I also noted that the build quality of the adapter was not as good as the new adapter. Now the adapter only cost me a few dollars, so it's no big loss. And it may be genuine, I honestly don't know. I might just have been unlucky. The new adapter uses a CH304 chipset, and as far as I've managed to find out, nobody actually copies this one. Probably because it was so cheap in the first place, it isn't worth the hassle of copying. The drivers work with Windows XP all the way up to Windows 10, so you should be good to go on this. Okay, well that wraps it up for this week. I hope you found it interesting, and maybe you'll add RS-485 control to your spindle. If you'd like more information on this video, why not check out my website, www.cncnuts.com. All that remains for me to do is to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers!